You're listening to All Talk Radio, Las Vegas, Nevada. Views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the host and guests and not necessarily those of the staff or management of alltalkradio.net. Welcome to Dante's Boxing Nation Show here on alltalkradio.net. Now here's your host, Dante. What's going on, guys? BoxingTalk.com, AllTalkRadio.net, and welcome to the Dante's Boxing Nation Show. I am your host, Dante. My two co-hosts joining me today are Norrin Radical and my man, A-Rab King, Mr. A-K. All right, so uh, we're going to get this show rolling. Man, we got some serious stuff to talk about today. It was a huge, huge fight, huge upset this past weekend. Sergio Martinez getting TKO'd <clears throat> by Mr. Have no chance of winning. Who would have thunk it? Miguel <laughs> Cotto. <laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. Let's go ahead and get it in, man. So, l listen, the, the, first, the, the first thing I want to say, guys, is like I said, man, I, you know, I've been saying this for the, for the longest. This reminds me of the Pacquiao versus De La Hoya situation. Nobody gave Pacquiao a chance when it comes to um, beating Oscar De La Hoya because of his what? His size, you know, so no one gave him a chance. As soon as uh, uh, Pacquiao beat the shit out of Oscar De La Hoya, then all of a sudden all the excuses, that, you know, reigned in for uh, Mr. Uh, De La Hoya. What are your thoughts on that so far, um, AK? Um, first of all, man, thanks for being on the show. Um, I Hold up, you you breaking up, man? Uh, hey, rap, you there? No, I think he's still on. He hung up. Okay, we gonna go ahead and uh, get a rap back on in a minute, guys. So anyway, we keep it rolling. So, um, what did you think about the fight, Norm? Okay, uh, yeah, I don't think we have a problem carrying it till we get AK back. But um, let me say this: it's 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 um it's one of those ironic situations for me personally. Um, it's like sometimes you enjoy being wrong you know what i mean yeah. some, some sometimes being wrong is a is a, is a you, you know it, it's one of those things where you, you you know you're pleasantly surprised um it was a, it was um I, i'm listen it was a great performance first of all for miguel cotto i mean um for the guy to move up capture the the middleweight title uh daring to be great you know what I mean? By uh, taking on a, a you know a bigger uh, opponent where he was the large underdog. You know what I mean? Um, so I give a whole lot of credit and props to Miguel Cotto. Um, as far as the fight itself, um, you know it was obvious that Sergio was debilitated by his injury. Um, there's there's an old sports idiom um, that's spoken, and uh, you know there's a difference between uh, you know um, being hurt. And an injury, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, yeah. what, and what Sergio had, that's an injury, you know what I mean? And, and he was clearly limited, you know, by, by the, um, you know, by the, uh, you know, by the... The disability or By, by the disability of his knee, mm -hmm. exactly. So, um, you know, that was, that, that played a factor. But that notwithstanding, um, Cotto went in there and did what he had to do. You know what I mean? He, he, he still fought a great fight. Um, he was a lot stronger than what, um, not, only, right, yeah. not only what the, the public thought, but he was a lot stronger than what Martinez thought. You know what I mean? Martinez thought he would be able to go in there and, and bully Cotto, and that was, definitely wasn't the case. Cotto was the stronger fighter. And, um, you know, he definitely uh, established that throughout the first portion of the fight. And then in, the, in those later rounds, in those seven, eight, and nine rounds, he boxed. Yeah. You know what I mean? He boxed. Yeah. He, he, let, he let Martinez come after him. You know he I mean? outboxed the boxer, actually, he, right? He, he, out, you know, he outboxed the supposed boxer. The I mean, supposed boxer. Uh, exactly. I mean, me personally, and um, uh, again, a lot of um, you know, other pundits would, would definitely agree that Cotto was always the superior boxer, technically. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he boxed. You know what I mean? He didn't just you know, go in there and just throw a whole bunch of haymakers and depending on, um, uh, again, Sergio's debilitation. You know what I mean? To, to be his key to victory. He still went in there, like I said, in those last few rounds. He boxed smart. He let Sergio come after him, baited uh, uh, Sergio. And, it, it, you know, it worked perfectly. So, again, big ups to, 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 um, to Miguel Cotto. You know what I mean? Big, big ups to yeah. Michael Angel. <laughs> On him. No, no doubt. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, AK. Yeah, you dropped me, Dante. No, man. <laughs> I, I didn't drop you. Uh, yeah, I thought you dropped us, man. Yeah. 
I thought yeah, you didn't no, like yeah, the show no more or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So I, I, I Welcome you, back. I Welcome back, kid. Because, you know, yeah, I thought you were mad at me because I was trying to convince you to pick Sergio. <laughs> but, you know. That's funny. I'm glad you brought that up. I ain't going to say it. I'm glad you brought that up. Let me, I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. You were going all the way for Cotto. I got to give you that, you know, and, um. Sure. I almost had you. I almost he had almost you. Had almost had almost me. picked Sergio. Yeah. yeah, but you, you you stick with Cotto. But at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, Sergio. He made me. Feel, he made me look like I was the smartest boxing fan out there. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that. What? Well, well, yeah, you know. It, it, it's funny because we, real quick before I let you go, I, I, I let, before I let you talk, AK, I just want to let everybody know it's funny because me and um, AK. We talked about this long time ago on the phone, and originally when we talked, I told him I, I was picking Kodo, and then we was going back and forth talking, and yeah, he all, he was making sense, and I was making sense, and I was like, well, now I'm kind of on the fence, and, and, and AK was like, no, 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 I don't want you to change me. I don't want you to change your opinion, because I want to say that I was right, you know, when Sergio <laughs> wins, so <laughs> so it was pretty yeah, funny, man. Uh, 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 no. And also, I don't want you, you know, if Cotto won, like, I don't want to take the blame, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? No, but, but I was. You know, I got to give you props for that. That was the uh, right, you know, you, 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 you broke it down. And I actually never gave a Cotto a chance before the fight. When you, when I talked to you that day, I actually saw how Cotto probably could win the fight. Like, and like you broke it down. You know, so I gotta give you that. Oh no, I I appreciate it, man. But like I said, you be you be breaking down stuff too. You got me on the um, Trout versus Laura, so you know we even. So it's all good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got you. But, but you know, on the fight, man, coming to the fight, one thing if you ask me that surprised me the most is the way Cod uh, the way Sergio couldn't take Cotto power at all. Every time he got hit with that left hook or even the right hand, he got hurt bad. And, you know, when the first, when, when, when the first, you know, the fight started and Cotto went to the center of the ring and he threw a one-two and caught him. That's a bad sign right there because you're not supposed to hit your opponent the first time you throw the two, you know, yeah. the first time you throw two punches. Yeah. So, and that kind of shows you that Sergio got a weak, de weak defense also, you know. Yeah. And then one thing that people say, which is, you know, Sergio is not, wasn't 100%. His knee, uh, if, if he had, if he was 100% healed, he, he would have beat Cotto. He would have knocked out Cotto. I, I really disagree with that because Cotto, uh, Sergio Martinez didn't need to use his footwork tonight. I mean, not tonight, you know, Saturday night. Because if you remember the first round, he got caught with a left hook by a counter. Mm -hmm. Sergio, uh, Cotto was outboxing him. It's not like Sergio went to the ring and was beating Cotto up, and after that, you know, um, he was moving around too much, using his footwork, and Cotto caught up with him on the ropes and hit, hit him with a body shot, and then Sergio hurt his knee and couldn't use his footwork no more. Yeah. And then Cotto stopped him. That's not how the fight went down. From the opening bell, Cotto was countering him. He was the boxer, and Cotto's not even that good of a counter puncher, but he was countering Sergio, hurting him every time he countered him, and that shows you the weak defense of Sergio Martinez. And that what led to the victory of Miguel Cotto. It ain't no need because, like I said, Sergio Martinez didn't need to use his footwork. It was, it was because there was a boxing match. And something that surprised me the most, which, which was the reach, I thought Sergio Martinez had like a, like a, you know, a, 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 a Gamboa versus Crawford reach. Yeah, but, yeah. It, yeah. You know, he, he only had one inch reach. On, on Cotto, and I thought, you know, coming to the fight, I was thinking like, you know, well, well, all, all Sergio really has to do is tie up in the inside and keep him at the end of his punches, and he's going to outbox him because Cotto ain't going to be able to reach him if you keep him at the end of his punches. But the problem was that they had almost the same reach, and, you know, I mean, Cotto was just countering him, and he was killing him. Every time he hit him, like I said, uh, he hurt him bad, and what surprised me the most, too, is that Floyd Mayweather was able to hurt, um, you know, Miguel Cotto, and Sergio Martinez, the power puncher, he couldn't hurt Cotto. That, and that actually surprised me because he caught he caught Cotto here and there, you know, here and there, but he couldn't hurt he, he couldn't hurt him at all. But that shows you what accuracy does. Uh, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
and, and, and not only that, guys, but I, I want to go ahead. Mm -hmm. I, you know, of course, um, I, I agree with um, with AK, but I will concede and say, yeah, I mean, he may have had, you know, an injury, but Absolutely. I don't believe that had a whole lot to do with the difference in how this fight played out. Another thing that, that strikes me is how is it possible that Sergio has an uh, injury this this disabil uh, uh, you know that disables him yeah that disables him so much but yet at the same time he's moving the whole night though mm -hmm. you know I mean you you would think it would be the opposite you would think a guy who has a knee injury he would be doing the opposite he would actually stand there and fight because of the knee injury mm -hmm. but what he actually did you go back and All you right. watch that fight I would encourage everyone to go back watch the replay on HBO this Saturday. Sergio Martinez did a lot of moving, and I'm not talking about a little bit of moving, a lot of moving. And I understand a lot of people are saying it's because he doesn't have the hand movement and he doesn't have the, um, the you know, the, the hand movement and the, the upper body movement. But yet at the same time, that suggests that he is not a versatile fighter. Exactly. And I want to say one thing real quick before I let you make your perfect analogy, mm -hmm. um, Noren, with the um, Ali situation. Last week, Noren, you remember we had um, – uh, with James Winchester, yes, sir. Rudy Hernandez, shotgun, shotgun, and um, <laughs> unfortunately that didn't play out too well with um, with Terrell Gouche. Okay. But I know you'll be back, James. But anyway, uh, I asked James. I said, uh, James, you know who do you pick? He said, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, 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 Martinez, right? But then I said, let me just ask you this, James. Take take away the size advantage. Who do you think is a better fighter? And he said, I think that Miguel Cotto is a better fighter. So the point that I'm making is he didn't look at the he didn't look at you know um, Sergio Martinez being a better fighter. He only thought that Sergio would win because he thought that Sergio had the size advantage, mm. right? But he believed that that uh, uh, Cotto was a better fighter. And what that basically means to me is once Cotto came in there and he showed he was just as strong, if not stronger, than Sergio Martinez, then he had the advantage because he was already a better skilled fighter. Go ahead, tell me what what, what you think about the fact that um, he couldn't adjust with the disability that he had, uh, Norn. And that's indicative of a lot of things. First of all, so I, I suppose, again, uh, perfect headline for the, <laughs> for the fight. Once again, boxing proves that size doesn't matter. You know what I mean? But the thing Most is, of the time, yeah. <laughs> in, in boxing. Yeah. But the, the thing is, 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 that's the point, is Cotto did expose Martinez. He exposed him for his limitations. Yeah. Because like you said, he's, he's a mobile fighter. This right. is his style. This is his style. But once that was compromised, what do you turn to? Yeah. Where do you dig in your arsenal? Yeah. You know what I mean? See, these are the things, like you said, the ability to adjust. And then, like you said, the perfect analogy is, you know, the fighter who everybody on the planet is acquainted with, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, is also a fighter who was renowned for fighting with his legs. Absolutely. You know what I mean? In his early career, you know, you'll never see a heavyweight like Ali again. You know what I mean? He fought with his legs, you know, in his movement. But once that became, once his reflexes slowed, once he started to succumb to father time, as all fighters, as all of us must do, what did he do? He found another way to be victorious in the ring. Without his legs. A la rope dope You know what I mean? There and he had go. some of his greatest victories upon his adjustment, which totally proved, you know, his his you know, his complete greatness. This is this is again the the kudos that you got to give the Kodo because yeah, he exposed he exposed Martinez as being a limited fighter. Absolutely. Because once Martinez main weapon in his arsenal you know what I mean? Became uh, he couldn't use it. He had nowhere else to turn. Yep. So you know that's uh, that's a perfect yeah. perfect analogy, the, man. The, perfect the, analogy with Muhammad Ali using his legs before the difference. And, the di pardon me. Go the, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The difference between a good fighter and an all-time great. Yeah. You know there I mean? you go. Exactly. There you go. And and that's really the only point that I was making. Like For I sure. said, I understand. Believe me, guys. Everybody watching, I understand that I am totally in a minority when it comes to. You know, uh, this situation with Martinez having a knee injury excuse and me and AK <laughs> in the total minority. But like I said, the point we're making is that I don't believe this would have made a difference 
because Sergio Martinez had never been in the ring with a guy with the type of skills that, that Miguel Cotto possesses. He's never been in there with a guy with, who was as fast as he is. Matter of fact, Cotto was probably quicker than, uh, than Sergio Martinez. He never been in the ring with a yeah. guy with that type of defense and with that type of inside fighting ability. People, you know, I had a, I, I, I've been talking to a lot of people, and like I said, everyone's been saying the same thing. It was the knees. It was the knees. But a lot of things that people keep saying as well is they kept saying, look at how good he did against Chavez. Look at how good he did against Paul Williams and Kelly Pavlik. But these type of fighters, they were not Miguel Cotto. Paul Williams is a volume puncher that is very easy to hit. Kelly Pavlik is a flat-footed fighter that is easy to hit. Okay? Same thing with, uh, with, with Chavez. Chavez. The only ability, the only um, advantage Chavez had is the fact power. that he came in with power and he was damn near a cruiserweight. You know, which I give Sergio Martinez credit for beating a cruiserweight that night. But none of these fighters had the type of skill that, that Miguel Cotto has. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Martinez, fought, I, I uh, um, Martinez fought a complete fighter, and we saw what happened. There you go. Go ahead, AK. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I definitely agree. That's what, that's, that's what I'm saying. The um, knee wasn't it. It was just that Miguel, Miguel Cotto is just a better fighter. And he was just a better fighter that night. And I truly believe that Cotto will give uh, Sergio a hard time, even in his palm. Because, like I said, Sergio didn't need to use his footwork because Cotto was outboxing him. He was countering him. He was countering his jab when Sergio, he took Sergio one two with the jab and the straight left and also the straight left to the body. He started landing that kind of to, like, you know, the middle of the fight. But Cotto started countering that with the right hand. So he was just a better fighter. All, all, he was just a better fighter all around it, and Sergio wasn't, you know. And Sergio just, as soon as Cotto took his um, best weapon, exactly. I, you know, Cotto just dominated the fight, and, um, you know, he made history. And I, I did, one thing I give Sergio credit for is his, his heart. He always absolutely. showed heart. But like I said, you know, you can't really use that knee, that knee um, excuse because, it was, no matter what, I see Cotto giving him a hard time any time of his career. Yeah. Any time. And I, I just want to add this, just to qualify my statement. I'm not saying that the knee wasn't a factor, but I'm yeah. just saying that you got to give a lot of credit to Miguel Cotto as a fighter, as a complete fighter. I totally agree with that yeah. assessment. And, and, For we, sure. and, and we might as well throw um, the, um, the typical uh, double standards, you know, that, that exists in the sport of boxing because, let's be honest, guys, if this was Floyd Mayweather fighting against Miguel Cotto and he had two knee braces on and he was 39 years old and he had previous knee injuries, same scenario as Sergio Martinez, right? How many people would have been saying, I'm talking about the same people who saying that it was the knees, it was the knees. How many people would have been saying that if this was Floyd Mayweather in that same situation that Sergio Martinez was in? It would not be a whole lot, right? It would not yeah. be a whole lot. Floyd, people people would be happy to see Floyd Mayweather lose. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, well, he's supposed to be great. He should have been able to deal with adversity. They would have been saying stuff like that. Uh, that's that's the way I see it. Go ahead, AK. Yeah, and Floyd Mayweather already dealt with that adversity before when he fought Castillo. And he, uh, yes, sir. you know, I think he broke his shoulder. Yeah, torn yeah. rotator cuff. And he still find a way to win. He find a way to win. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And, you know, it, well, you know, and he won the fight. And then he, people said, hey, they didn't give him credit for finding a way to win with a broken shoulder. They yeah. said, oh, he lost. He ain't nothing but a bum. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They, see a rematch. they didn't he even saw, bring it up. You know, the, took he, a re yeah, he took a rematch out of the way, and he beat him convincingly. Convincingly. Like you said, yeah, they didn't even bring up. People People who say, oh, yeah, Floyd, he ain't undefeated. He lost to Casillo. They don't even bring up the fact that he had an injury, a disability in that fight, mm -hmm. right? They don't, Because they just want to see him lose, so... You know, once again, that's what the double standards are. So let's go ahead and um, also talk about what Freddie Roach said uh -oh. after this fight. Now, Freddie Roach, you know, the funny thing with Freddie Roach is... I'm laughing already. <laughs> Freddie Roach <laughs> always says some dumb stuff. I mean, let's just keep it real. He, You know, he is, he is the epitome of a dumbass fan, realistically. <laughs> but at the same time, though, I gave, I gave Freddie Roach credit for how he broke down 
you uh, Sergio Martinez before this fight. He kind of sounded almost like me. He was like, look, man, Sergio Martinez doesn't have the defense. He puts his hands down, and this and hit, that style is all wrong for Miguel Cotto. We're going to knock him out. So I was like, wow, finally Freddie Roach is saying something that makes sense. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like some promotional type of, you know, um, bullshit, exactly. right? Exactly. But then all of a sudden, he goes right back to the typical Freddie Roach type stuff because now he's saying after this great win that uh, Floyd Mayweather apparently is going to be afraid to fight Miguel Cotto. And not only that, but because Floyd Mayweather, this is what Roach says, because Mayweather no longer has legs, that Miguel Cotto is going to knock him out easy. This is what Freddie Roach is saying right now. Norrin, tell me, what do, you, what do you think about these statements, man? Does it have any validity or what? Uh, where do you begin? Absolutely <laughs> not. Petty, oh, I mean, Freddie, um, P-E-D-D-I-E. Um, okay. This is the statement I would have made. I would have I made the statement to, to, to lend some legitimacy to it. I would have said, listen, Miguel Cotto did something that Floyd was unwilling to do. Whatever the reason, Floyd never stepped up and, and fought uh, Martinez when Martinez was calling Floyd out. Uh, Miguel Cotto dared to be great. He stepped up, moved to 160, 159, whatever the case is, moved up to 160, captured the middleweight title, and now Floyd, we challenge you. That, to me, would have been a legitimate statement. If the, Roach would have said that. Ex exactly. Uh, to, say that, to, to say that Floyd is scared, now he's scared to fight uh, Cotto, well, I mean, supposedly when he fought Cotto, what, two years ago, um, wasn't Cotto past his prime at that time? Didn't he wait for Cotto's entire career for, you know, for Cotto to be washed up yeah. until taking the fight? So now, two years later, he's, he's scared again. Like you said, it's, it's just promotional buffoonery. You know what I mean? It, 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 that type of uh, language, it worked with Pacquiao. You know what I mean? To to uh, enhance Pacquiao's career. Yeah. And now Coach is, uh, <laughs> the joke Coach Roach, <laughs> now Roach is doing it again. Yeah. You know, he's just doing that again with, with Cotto. You know, Floyd's scared of this guy. Floyd's been scared of mother. Floyd's been scared of fighters his whole career. And mm -hmm. every time he steps up to the plate and he beats them, and, you know, it's on to the next one. Who's he scared of now? So, you know, it's, it's, it's a recycling bin. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's just a ridiculous statement. It's old. It's contrite. You know what I mean? It, we've been there. We've done that. We've seen that. You know what I mean? I would have a lot more respect for Roach if he just, you know, start calling out these guys in the middleweight division. You yeah. know what I mean? Let, yeah. let, let Cotto establish himself as the great fighter he is. You know what I mean? Instead of constantly building everybody's name off of Mayweather's back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just let Cotto campaign at middleweight and prove what a great fighter and how deserved he is of the, the credit we give him as a Hall of Fame fighter. You know what I mean? I would have a whole lot more respect for Mr. Roach if he took that approach. No, yeah. absolutely. Go yeah. ahead, AK. Yeah, well, you know, you see if there's Dante when you said that Freddie is more of a promoter than a trainer. Yeah. You know, because, you know, he, he, both, he, may, you know, he, he said that before the Sergio fight, I don't know if you heard that, but he said that Sergio keep his, his hands by his ass. <laughs> he was like, come on, man. Come get the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Hold on, AK. AK, AK, uh -huh. if, you could, if you could start that over for me just real quick because you, you broke up just a little bit. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, I was just saying that you said it best when, um, you know, when you said that Freddie is more of a, a promoter than a trainer. Uh -huh. Because he knows how to promote fights more than, you know, train, to yeah. be honest with you. Sure because indeed. I remember before the Sergio fight, you know, he said that Sergio keep his hands by his ass. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, you know, his defense is exposed. I was going to, you know, beat the shit out of him. And that's exactly what he said, you know. He always come up with, you know, theories that Pacquiao will kill uh, Timothy Bradley, that Pacquiao will not First round, Floyd. yeah. Yeah, and all that, you know, we already know how, you know, Freddie Roach does. But Floyd Mayweather, he already fought at his best weight at that time, which was 150, which was comfortable for him. I mean, when he fought Sergio, he didn't weigh in at 160. He went, when he weighed in, I think he was 155. That's only one pound different, you know. And two years ago, that's even him in his, you know, more of more of cool prime when he fought Floyd, in exactly. my opinion. So, 
I truly believe that, you know, let's not compare Sergio to Floyd Mayweather as far as his defense. You know, let's be real here. You know, as far as Floyd anything. Mayweather is a yeah. defensive fighter, and Sergio is like truly the opposite, you know, as far as defense. And, you know, it's just a whole different level when it comes to that. And, and Floyd Mayweather stayed with Cotto on the, ro- on the ropes, and he had the better of Cotto. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just saying, just just the, you know, to to my own chagrin, per, probably more than likely, but just to try and make some logic of that statement, where did the indication that Mayweather is scared now scared of where you know what I mean? like where does that come from? Logically, it makes no <laughs> sense at all, right? Logically, it makes no sense at all. Fucking buffoonery. Especially because hey, hey, that, re- that rematch going bring a lot of money to the table, though. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Especially if it was in Madison Square Garden. That, that would be real cool. That would be explosive. Yeah. But, you know, and, and this, yeah. what I, this is what I want to say um, in response to what you said, Norm, because this is what a lot of fans, you know, detractors of Floyd are saying. They're saying that. They're saying, well, Floyd Mayweather, uh, uh, Miguel Cotto, he did something that uh, Miguel Cotto was afraid to do. That, that Floyd, Floyd that Mayweather. Yeah, excuse me. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, uh, Floyd Mayweather or Miguel Cotto, he did something that Mayweather was afraid to do, and that was move up to the middleweight division and take on Sergio Martinez. Now, you could look at that a whole lot of different ways. You can also look at it, I look at it as this makes Floyd Mayweather look even better because Floyd, who was the one that beat the guy that beat Sergio Martinez? Mm-hmm. It was Miguel Cotto. Uh, it was Floyd Mayweather, excuse me, right? So, and we already know if Miguel Cotto came back and fought uh, Mayweather in a rematch, Floyd Mayweather would most likely beat Miguel Cotto again at 154. Understand something. Manny Pacquiao gets a little credit as well, but he did fight him at a catch weight in contrast to Floyd Mayweather fighting Miguel Cotto at 154. We all know that um, uh, Manny Pacquiao, he refused to fight uh, Miguel Cotto at uh, 154 in a rematch. So, I mean, the, the, yeah. so the, the, the point that I'm making is um, you can look at it different ways. This makes Floyd Mayweather look good because he beat the man to beat the man. Just like if Canelo were to beat Laura, which is no guarantee he will, but if he beats Laura, who does that make look even better? That makes Floyd Mayweather look yeah. even better. Of course. You know? So, yeah. And not only that, and but thing- real quick, real quick, too, as well, now we also know that if Floyd would have beat Sergio exactly. Martinez, exactly. we would have got the excuses to exactly. a whole other level. He if they making excuses against Cotto, imagine the excuses they would make if Floyd. He they waited for him. Martinez to be finished. He yeah. waited till he had a knee injury. Like yeah. you know, Floyd he, was Floyd was in the surgery room with him. You know exactly. I mean? He waited till his knee was debilitated. You know. Exactly. Yeah. For so sure. go ahead, AK. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> They're going to say if Floyd never fought Sergio, they they were going to say. Oh, man, Floyd Mayweather waited to Sergio, uh, you know, got old and he fought him. He, he ducked him in his palm. We already know that. But, you know, for the people who say Floyd Mayweather don't challenge himself, he need to prove himself. But how many times Floyd Mayweather got to prove himself? Now, who, who are we comparing him to? Are we comparing him to Miguel Cotto? Because now people saying Miguel Cotto did something that Floyd Mayweather didn't do. But Floyd Mayweather already got five divisions. Cotto, this is his fourth belt in the fourth division, right? Yeah. Cotto they had already tried, you know, challenged himself one more time more than Cotto did. So let's see Cotto challenge himself like Floyd Mayweather and move up to 168 and fight maybe the best out there, Andre Ward. You know this? Uh, if you want to do what Floyd Mayweather I don't want to see that. I do, I do, I do not want to see that. <laughs> yeah, because what's funny to me, That's they exactly. bring up, oh, Floyd Mayweather need to go up and fight, the, you know, Sergio Martinez in the middle way. They were saying that, right? And they said, look at Cotto, he did it, you know. You know, that's why we give him props. Absolutely. We don't give no Floyd Mayweather no props because he never did nothing like that. So my question is, where did Cotto start at? Yeah. He started at 140. He started at 140. Now, also, yeah, he started 140. He was a huge dude. So and that he means he's supposed fight. to go he, up to 168, or yeah, Mm-mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's, yeah. When he, when he started at when he started at 140, he will come. He used to fight too. He will like you know come 150, 155 to the fight. Floyd Mayweather, when he started at 130, he will only gain like you know four or five pounds when he comes to the fight. He maintained that weight. Yeah. And when, what's funny is he can also compare him to an all-time great, which you know. That's what you're supposed to do <laughs> to another great fighter. But they say, look at Leonard. He fought Hagler. Why Floyd Mayweather didn't fight Sergio? But again, Leonard, he started off at 147. 
Yeah. Not at 130. Yeah. And let's be let's be real here. Could you imagine? That's a question for you, Dante, and um, you know, uh, radical. Can you imagine Len- uh, Sugar Ray Leonard move up five weight divisions, which is all the way to 175 pounds, and compete with all-time great at 175, such as Roy Jones, James Tony? Can you see him compete with them, and you give him actually a chance of winning? Close to the end but, of his like, career, too. When yeah. you see Floyd Mayweather, he, he is doing that. Yeah, he, absolutely. People, I don't care what you say. I believe that. Floyd Mayweather, if you think Floyd Mayweather will lose to, you know, to um, all the all-time greats at 147, such as, uh, you know, uh, Sugar Ray Robertson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Duran, whoever, at 147. If you think he will lose to them or win, who still think it's going to be a competitive fight? You know, because he is, at, at this point of his career, he at the highest weight which is 147, 154, and he's competing with the best. He, yeah. he dominated Can- Canelo. He just beat Cotto. But you can't say he was cherry-picking no more, not after what Cotto did. You can't say he, he cherry-picked Canelo, not after what Canelo did to Angulo. So you see him today, he's competing with the best and dominating them. And there's no question that he can compete with the best. I'm not saying he will beat Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm not say- saying he will beat her. But he will compete with them. Absolutely. And who, what great fighter, I'm talking about, you could go down the list from Sugar Ray Robinson, who could move up five divisions and compete with the all-time greats at that weight. At yep. that stage of your career. At that stage of your career. You know, and, and, let, me, and let me add this, too. Because, uh, you know, it, it, it becomes, you know, becomes very subjective when you start talking about pound for pound. You know what I mean? Which is, which is why that term was, that, that phrase was coined for the great Sugar Ray Robinson. Mm-hmm. But it becomes very subjective because me, personally, I'm a component of the skills of a fighter. And I want to see fighters compete where they are comfortable. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's great to move up in divisions. You know, that, that is certainly, obviously, that's a hallmark of greatness. Again, that's, you know, totally definitive of what pound for pound means. But it's, it's very important, you know, for a fighter to fight where they're comfortable. And I, I think Floyd also subscribes to, you know, to that particular ideology. You know, you got to fight where you're comfortable. And we're talking about a guy who's never come in weighing more than 151. You know what I mean? And, and like you said, you uh, like you said, Cotto, you know, he came in at 155. So he was still, you know, and that's at the weigh-in. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. again, you're still talking about it. He's basically fighting as a junior middleweight. You know what I mean? Fighting for the, for the middleweight title. So, uh, you know, again, it's about fighting where you're comfortable. But if your skills, you know, if your skills are there, you're going to be able to pull it off regardless. So, again, it's, you know, back to a, a page from the Mayweather book. You know what I mean? Skills win those fights. You know what I mean? Like, like Roger would say, it's about skills, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Exclamation mark, huh? Word is bond. Hey, so also, you also have to look at it this way. How come no one is asking Manny Pacquiao to move up to middleweight? Mm. How come no one is asking, people don't even want to see Juan Marquez fight a strong puncher, let alone move up, you know, but when it comes to Floyd Mayweather, you know, how come he didn't move up? Now, if you're comparing Floyd Mayweather to Miguel Cotto, we have to also take into consideration that Miguel Cotto, he's been fighting at 154 for the last couple of years, right? Now, he hasn't been going up and down like, you know, Floyd Mayweather fighting at a catch weight, then fighting at 147. No, no. Cotto's been fighting at 154, okay, number one. And like you touched on, uh, Norrin, Floyd Mayweather, the highest he normally weighs at the night of a fight is 151. He woke up the day of the fight against uh, Canelo at 146. So it doesn't make sense to try to compare him to, to, to Miguel Cotto moving exactly. up. That's, you know, that's, exactly. that's, that's, that's no different than comparing him to, you know, any other, you know, guy who's naturally, who exactly. naturally has a size to move up to middleweight and super middleweight yeah. and so on and so yeah. forth. Where you you're know. comfortable. Yeah. The and another comfortable. thing, Dante, uh, you know, for Pacquiao, as far as Pacquiao, let's see him fight 154 pounds first. Has he yeah. fought 154 pounds yet? Yeah. You know, nope. we're talking about him fighting the middleweight. He hasn't fought the shorty middle, middleweight yet. True. Uh, he fought one, one but that dude was had just got knocked out. Yeah. And that was a catchweight. You yeah, know, and that yeah, was a catchweight. Yeah, he, first of all, he got knocked out by Shane Mosley. Yeah. Got a shot with, yeah. With, with, with Manny Pacquiao. He never fought but one of his prime. At 147, anyway. And, you know, they fought at 150 catchweight. Like, come on, man. He hasn't even fought 154, a real 154 pounder 
like Floyd, May- Floyd Mayweather did. Let's see, let's see him fight um, Canelo Alvarez at 152. Yeah. You know, but you know what Freddie Roach said? He said, that, you know, if, if, Cotto, if Canelo don't move to 150, we're not fighting him. Like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I, I challenge anyone to, to bring up a fighter in the top ten right now that is winning, that's still considered one of the best fighters in the world, and they have challenged themselves more times than Floyd Mayweather did. And, and, yeah, and, that's, that's the question yeah. I have and, and for you guys. Just, just to make the, the point again about fighting where you're comfortable, because uh, uh, Mayweather made the statement over and over, he wanted to fight as opposed to Pacquiao, who fought at a catch weight with a rehydration clause, a 145 when he fought Cotto. But he made the point specifically, explicitly, he wanted to fight Cotto at the weight that he was comfortable. They fought at 154. Now he fought Canelo with the catch weight of 152. But Cotto is the guy that moved up and captured the middleweight crown. You, know, you understand uh-huh. what I'm saying? That's, that's makes, that yeah. makes all the sense a- in the world. Exactly. And, exactly. And another, another thing, you know, people say that also – Floyd Mayweather don't fight the best, you know, when he move up in weight. I'm like, who are the best? You know, he fought Hernandez when he when, when he first won his title, then he moved up to 135. He fought the, the best at, at lightweight at that time, was, which was because, you know, he moved to 140. You know, Hatton was considered the best. He fought Gotti, but it was Hatton Dad that won, the one who said, we don't want the fight right now. It wasn't Floyd Mayweather fought. He actually wanted to fight Hatton, but Hatton turned down at that time. Then he moved to 147. Mike Vieira was not considered the best at 147. It was Bosemir. He mm-hmm. fought Bosemir after they were saying that he was scared of Bosemir. And, you know, one thing, he hurt his hand in that fight, and he still found a way to win every round. Yeah. Then he moved to 154, beat Oscar. And, you know, we, you know, we could go down the list. Mosley, you know, uh, they, were, they were saying he was scared of Mosley. As soon as he signed him to fight Mosley, oh, Shane Mosley's so old. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. Then you know he fight Canelo. Uh, he, he's scared of Canelo. As soon as he fight him, oh, Canelo. Uh, you know, he's too young. Uh, yeah. Like, well, what is? Yeah, <laughs> what but is soon he as... supposed to be here? And they say uh, Floyd Mayweather need to challenge himself. Uh, if if guys like Duran or you know the all time greats, uh, if if he go down go down against them, if he you know fights in the ring, oh, I'm like, I mean, he don't speak in his era. Twenty people in era. Like, well, I mean, it's crazy. You know, that is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 just real quick, um, like I said, but once Canelo fights against Lara, now Lara he challenging himself when he fights against Canelo. But yeah, but when when Floyd fought against Canelo with a 15 pound dis- weight disadvantage, 14 years old, uh, younger Canelo is. Uh, it's supposed to be a guaranteed easy fight, and Floyd Mayweather's not challenging himself. Also, when Sugar Ray Leonard fought uh, Hagler at middleweight, Sugar Ray Leonard, he came off of retirement, okay? So it's not as if he was an active welterweight that was, you know, that was fighting that welterweight, and he just decided to jump up to middleweight and fight for the middleweight title. He, he had a layoff. He was off for a good, what, year or so or whatever? Yeah. So he was More walking. than that, bro. He's off for like five years. It was like five yeah. years? Yeah, it was like a five-year oh, layoff when then, he came back and fought Hagler. Then that really makes more mm-hmm. sense mm-hmm. why it would be more easier for him to do that, right? Mm-hmm. You walking around for five years? He, he probably was walking around at about 175, you know, or 160, whatever the case may be. So. But you can't. The point is, you can't compare that to an active fighter fighting at 147 who comes in the ring at 150 the night of the fight. So I just want to say this. I think, uh, uh, as usual, we did a great job of exposing these the double standards. Yes, sir. Is, listen, let the accomplishments of Miguel Cotto stand on their own merits, where you don't have to, you know, say, oh, well, this would would Mayweather and this would Mayweather. Like I said, let let it stand on its own. Great job by by Miguel Cotto. You know what I mean? Can't oh, say yeah. it enough. Con- congrats to him. For sure. And, and speaking of him, uh, what should be next for Cotto, guys? I mean, there's a lot of attractive fights. Wait. You got Cotto. Go ahead. Go ahead, Norm. <laughs> hey, no. Nah, like I said, the, he's campaign at, at, at middleweight. I mean, he can – listen, there's a lot – of um, great fights and everywhere from 154 to 160 for, for Cotto. I mean, his name is now, you know, officially, you know, it's established again. You know what I mean? He, he's hot. You know what I mean? He, he ain't got to ride nobody's coattails, you know, uh, uh, Coach Roach notwithstanding. And, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
And, um, you, you know, like I said, the, the, the middleweight division is wide open for him. Listen, I think um, Miguel Cotto versus Peter Kid Chocolate Quillen, I think that is a fucking, whoo, I, you know what I mean? Man. Intriguing. I think that is a great fight. You know what I mean? I think that's a great yeah, fight. Um, um, one thing, though, um, you know, Dante, you know, before we close out on the, you know, floating of the topic, I just want to say, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard is one of the all-time greats, too. I was in chin on him, nothing, but, you know, uh, he's on my five greatest boxers of, of all time. Yeah. But one thing, if Mine you are too. Floyd Mayweather, you know, you don't got to hate Floyd Mayweather, but you don't got to love him either. Just yeah. give him the credit Just that he Just be honest. Of course. He, Just tell the truth. It. That's it. You, you know what I'm saying? How he hard is it. that? It's not like you gave him the, the credit to yeah. take it away from him. No, he earned it. So give him the credit that he deserves. But, and if you're hating on him, if you don't like him, if you, if you hate him for some reason, fine. But don't take credit away from him because you never gave him credit in the first place to take away f credit from him. Oh. He's the number one pound for pound because he earned it. <laughs> you don't put him on the top. You know, you don't put him number one pound for pound because you like him. No, he's the number one pound for pound because he earned it. Yeah. Regan Dye, he's the number, he's the number three pound for pound because he earned it. HBO didn't put him there because they love him. No, he earned it and put himself there, just like Floyd Mayweather. So what I'm saying is, you know, if you're not going to give a guy credit, just don't take the credit away from him that he deserves. But what, <laughs> uh, to bring a little levity to the situation, <laughs> what, what, what uh, AK might not realize is that he's talking to what? Retard? Oh, let me say. DAFs. <laughs> you know Dumbass that? fans. Dumbass. DACF. <laughs> Dumbass casual fans. There you go. And, there you and, go. and uh, <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't subscribe to logic. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so, so uh, with, with, with Kodo and um, what's next for him, again, like I said, um, I would love to see him and, and Kid Chocolate. I think that's a great fight. Um, I, hey, listen, a lot of people think – it wouldn't be competitive with with Cotto and Golovkin. I I say you know Cotto's a great fighter. I think Cotto it makes any is has a competitive fight with anybody, with anybody. from 154 to 160. I don't think he'll win that fight. I, I think um you know eventually Golovkin's uh, power will catch up to Cotto, but uh, again um Golovkin is not a great defensive fighter. He gets hit a lot. And if Cotto can maximize and capitalize off that, <laughs> you know what I mean, Plug. already, baby, send that check. Yeah. You know what I mean? If he can, if he, if, if, if he can, if he can, if he, hold on, AK, hold on, AK. If he can, if he can exploit that deficiency in, uh, in Golovkin's uh, arsenal, you know, that, that Golovkin gets hit a lot, then again, we, you know, we, we got another great fight on our hands. So I say, you know, everything from 154 to 160 is wide open for Miguel Cotto. Yes, sir. I'm listening, brother. Go ahead, AK. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, um, Cotto, I would love to see him versus Golovkin, like you said, you know, Pierre Quillen, uh, Floyd Mayweather the rematch even, or Pacquiao rematch at 154. They all great. But him versus Golovkin, even though Golovkin don't have the best defense, I think he, you know, his chin is uh, better than Sergio. I think he will take oh, a better yeah. oh, punch. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. Him absolutely. With Stevenson, you know, Stevenson caught him with some punches now. Stevenson is a hard, a hard hitter. And he took him. I think he's gonna be a little bit too much for Cotto. Yeah. But you know, other I than that, you know, uh, you know, Cotto, he will do good against a lot of fighters. But the really the rematch that I really want to see if it's gonna happen at 154, Cotto versus Pacquiao. I really want to see that mm -hmm. if that's gonna happen. But have you heard about the Mayfield situation? No. What's going on with the Mayfield, Korean Mayfield situation? Mm. What's going yeah, on with they, that? Um, they, they 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 said they dropped Mayfield. The top rank. Top rank. Uh, yeah. Good for wow. Mayfield. <laughs> good yeah. good yeah. for May. Good for the career of Kareem Mayfield. Jump out while the plane yeah. is crash. It's coming down to a crash. He jumped out with the parachute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, hey, thing. that's well, you know, but that that also, um, you know, that's not that's a good and bad thing because he still needs to get signed by a major um, promotional company, or he needs to he needs to pray. That he could still get one of those um, major uh, fights that's available, big fight, and, yeah. and one of the big fights, and, and we already know fighters like Juan Marquez and Danny Garcia's and all them, they're not trying to fight Kareem Mayfield if they don't have to. So you know, it, it, it's a it's a catch uh, twenty two for uh, Kareem Mayfield. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah. But I, I think in the long run, I, I think it's going to work in his favor. You think so? Yeah. I, I hope so, man, because I, I really like Kareem. Yeah. That that top rank is a sinking ship, boy. It, it, man, man, but then again, we got to wonder yeah. if, if if Oscar yeah, Golden Boy is a sinking ship. <laughs> is 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 Richard Schaefer 
and, and Al Heyman, is that the new exactly. big promotional exactly. company that's exactly. about to take over? Exactly. You know, but let me let me just say this real quick before we talk about that. Uh, I wanted to get my assessment on um, Golovkin versus Cotto, uh, just comparing um, Golovkin to Sergio Martinez. Not only does he have, you know, a much better chin, but uh, he's a much better fighter than Sergio Martinez. You know, first of all, I just want to make it clear. I've been telling people on my channel for the longest, I think that Golovkin, he would have annihilated Sergio Martinez. And it's a good thing Sergio never took that fight. But, um, but when it comes to Sergio against Miguel Cotto, I think that Golovkin did show a little bit of vulnerabilities against Curtis Stevens. Uh, when he was getting backed up, he looked like he was uncomfortable. I lean towards Golovkin, but I think that um, – Cotto, he could, pros he could possibly expose uh, Triple G for a couple of rounds. People have to understand, sometimes um, a fighter's only job is to go in there and expose him so that we can see the human side of that fighter. You know, so I, I think that would be the job that Miguel Cotto would have. I mean, of course, he wants to win, but I think he could expose um, someone like Golovkin a little bit. But amateur uh, pedigree experience and skill-wise, there's no comparison uh, comparing Golovkin to uh, Sergio Martinez. Yeah, so yeah. but and then and another yeah. Go ahead, man, go uh, ahead. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point you brought up. Yeah, he definitely he even has a better defense than we all got two that. minutes. Go ahead. Around better than, yeah, and he got an amateur you know, uh, background and all that. But one thing about you know, talking about the Mayfield situation, he was in the Regan shoes and you know, Regan I always say we win and they still some problems. Yeah. You know, we win fights and they got problems with us winning. So imagine if we lose. Mayfield was in that same situation. He wins and fights still duck him and he can't get no fight. And he lost and you saw what happened. Uh -huh. You know, from our rank. And yeah. Regan, if he trust me, if he lost, he probably would have got dropped too. But hopefully he could get a big fight and bow, a bounce back because he got all the talent. You see guys like guys like he beat, you know, convincingly like Herrera when he beat him. They say, you know, Garcia fought Herrera. And, but he said Kareem Mayfield don't deserve a shot. But yeah. he beat Herrera. That's like Angulo when he fought Canelo. They said, oh, Canelo deserve a shot. Uh, Angulo deserve a shot at Canelo. But Lara don't. But Angulo just lost to Lara. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's funny we to know me what how, it is. you know, the comparison is when we, it comes we... to Regan Dyer and Kareem Mayfield. Because like, like I said, Kareem Mayfield has all the skills in the world. He just, he tried that, that, you know, that fight. Yep, absolutely. And we got one minute left. So um, I want to close off um, with, with asking the um, obvious when it comes to Sergio Martinez. Should Sergio Martinez re uh, retire? Yes. Yes? What do you think, AK? Yeah. You think he should retire? Oh, man. You know, I, I mean, I definitely think he, he, he should retire. But if I was him, I would get an uh, easy win and retire. <laughs> yeah. Just for the good look, you know. Just for good luck. Just to ride off into the sunset. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I agree. He, he probably should retire before he end up walking around with slurred speech because, um, you know, if you're getting yeah. caught like that in multiple fights, yeah, you can start aging real quick, you know, or quicker than he already yeah. has. Exactly. Right? So yeah, definitely, yeah, he, he should retire. Yeah, and thanks uh, for having me on the show, Dante. And, of course, you know, man. Nice talking to you too, right, Ryan Nichol. No doubt. All, all day, likewise. All, all day. Thanks. I I appreciate you guys for you know making the show entertaining and. Hey Dante, have, let, let me add one, one last go thing. Ahead, go Real ahead. quick, you know I'm quick with it. Hey, <laughs> uh, uh, you better watch out for the DCAFs. They coming to get you, son. <laughs> they coming for you. <laughs> and that's and that shouts out to your boy Shelton. And, and, hey, that shouts out to your boy Shelton. Um, I, I forget his full name on my YouTube. They coming like, for you, fam. <laughs> It's going we're gonna have a three part series. You know, the DFs part one, two and three on some on D some Freddy Krueger type, you know what I mean? The decafs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so shouts out to Shelton for coining that uh that DAFs, all right? All right, guys, um we see you guys next week, man, Tuesday, three PM Pacific Standard Time. I'm on to the next one, y'all. We out. Ready?